in August 1948. You know, Gabi, my, my grandfather attended this meeting, and I think my mom was a child, but joined him then. So I, I had a fair amount of documentation about this meeting because, you know, families don't throw things away. But Dr. Jack Reese was an amazing, uh, you know, uh, energy behind the Federation. Uh, he had announced the resolution at the plenary session of the Congress following the day and was ratified by the official Congress delegates on the 21st of August. So that's our birthday, really, on the 21st of August. Uh, if I was to look at their missions, the Federation had a very different mission. It was there to promote the advancements of mental health, but underlining awareness, prevention, advocacy came very strong, and best, best practice recovery focused on interventions worldwide. Now, if we were to look at the World Psychiatric Association, two years younger, uh, Jean Delay was a scientist at best. You know, Delay and Delay Care, they are people who, who discovered Largactel and the first antipsychotic ever to be used. Uh, it was a much more medical society, and uh, it was started in Paris, in the Grand Amphitheater, I even. It had for its mission, uh, uh, it's the advancement of psychiatry and mental health. So it was much more medical, much more treatment-oriented, prevention-oriented. Uh, there was, of course, at a later stage, advocacy and other things, but it was, it was a scientific society to start with. Uh, that's the 1948 document that I found uh, in, in, uh, on our shelf somewhere in the hospital. That's the Paris meeting in 1950 of the World Federation, of the WPA, uh, the World Psychiatric Association. So basically, where do we stand? Since 1948, uh, the Federation prioritized inclusions of multidisciplinary members, service users, carers. It was a much broader society and not, not as much hardcore science, not as much statistics. You attend a WFMH meeting and you hear of concepts, of advocacy groups, of personal experience. It's very touching. You, you attend a WPA meeting, you'll get a lot more medical graphs and p-values and, 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 you know, they. Both are needed, and both needed to complement each other. Uh, World Federation was involved in promotion, services, advocacy, policy setting, of course, uh, were among the people who would be invited to the membership of the Federation. Now, the WPA has worked with its members and partners and components around the world to promote mental health, to encourage the highest possible standards of clinical practice. This is something very specific to WPA, and ethical behavior in psychiatry. Through its education programs, meetings, and publications, it aims to increase the knowledge about mental disorders and to grow the skills and knowledge necessary to prevent and treat such disorders. So, throughout times from the 40s, I wanted to show you, I had a list of presidents, okay. So basically, throughout times, the various presidents of the WPA worked with very successful collaborations with support from the pharmaceutical industry that promoted scientific research, and, uh, you know, regular double-blind studies between different organizations uh, and embarked in that direction. While the Federation went more in the direction of, uh, you know, advocacy, carers, the kind of support they need, uh, and they evolved in different directions. But came a time where the missions had become nearly quite different, even though they were both concerned with mental health. And that wasn't just unique to our two societies. I think the, the whole world, following the uh, Second World War, had developed a kind of unity, and there should be no more wars, no more differences. We will work together uh, in, in, in sort of promoting peace. Gradually, that generation that suffered the divisions of the wars of the 1940s were either no longer in charge or no longer around. And gradually, we started to live again in a world where divisions between societies, between countries, between cultures, between religions, seems to be uh, more prominent. And it, it, it is a concerning uh, situation for me and for many of us who work in the field of mental health. And I don't know if you remember, Gabby, but back in 2015, when we had the World Congress in Cairo, 
and you kindly invited me to give a talk at the opening session. Uh, my idea was, I never thought in my 40 years of practice of mental health support and care that, that we mental health professionals would need to give any advice to politicians. You know, and we lived in a world where politicians knew better. Well, I, I beg to differ, it's not the case anymore. I think politicians need to know some facts about mental health. They need to know a basic fact about human behavior, that when you bomb a city, people leave. And then when they leave, we call them immigrants. And then we decide to build walls to stop them from immigrating. Now, we could have told them all along, walls will never stop human beings from moving around. You start history, it hasn't worked. Seas haven't stopped human beings from traveling from one place to another. So basically, we today, as two societies, and as we seem to be working closer together, probably more so than any time in our 70 years, we, we have a message to give to the world. We work in a way where we complement each other. And this state of division we're living in, uh, we, we mental health professionals in all societies have a role to tell the world that you're not going to solve your COVID situation by vaccinating your country alone. It's not going to work. Uh, you're not going to solve the COVID situation by choosing an elite group of professionals or politicians or military people and give those the vaccine. It's not going to work. Unless the whole herd develops immunity, we're all going to suffer. So we have a message to give and I think we we stand uh, at a very good point at this point uh, in the history of our two societies. Uh, the fact that certainly for the past year and for long to come, Helen Herman has, is an experienced person who worked with the Federation for a long time and then had become president of the World Psychiatric Association. And I went through the list of past presidents of both societies. I'm not aware that there was a time when both societies were headed by ladies. And uh, I, I think this is a big plus, and a big plus for our society. Uh, I live in a part of the world where, throughout history, we've had, let me see if I can find that slide. Yeah, these are current uh, presidents at the moment, Ingrid and Daniel, who sadly can't be with us today uh, for personal obligations. But the fact that you were there together at the time, and that Helen made a point of coming uh, all the way to Buenos Aires to be attending our meetings, it's not something that's always happened at the Federation of Music. So thank you, Helen, for, for being there for us. And thank you, Ingrid, for bringing those two societies working in collaboration in such a successful way. But you know, this is the other lady in my part of the world. Uh, Cleopatra, of course, was queen of Egypt in pharaonic times. And uh, Egypt was being, for all intents and practical purposes, invaded by the Greeks. And if we'd had a king and not a queen at that time, Helen, I promise you we would have been at war with the Greeks that would have destroyed probably both countries because they were, by those days, standard, had huge armies. But Cleopatra didn't go to war. She went on her fleet and invited Antony and many other Greek leaders for dinner on her boat. Uh, and, and, you know, when Gabby says, I go sailing in Greece, it just reminds me of that. I, I, I think it's just a clever way of doing things. Let, let's work together. Let's not fight each other. I, I am sure that if we'd had a, a king, not a queen at the time, both, both historical countries would have been destroyed for long. So thank you for being there for uh, both of us. So where, what do I see for the future? Where do we go from here? I would like to suggest and, and invite everyone that, you know, attendance in meetings of both societies. Be a dream if one day we were to have a joint conference, you know, uh, we, we organize conferences that we call the World Congress. And you organize conferences that you call the World Congress of Psychiatry. But do you think it would be possible to organize a joint meeting between the two societies? I mean, that would be the epitome of, of collaboration. But before we get to that point, uh, it would be interesting to know at the end of this uh, World Congress that we're having now in March, how many World Federation members have actually subscribed. Uh, and in reverse, when Gabby, you're hosting your conference in London, how many people for WPA? I mean, it's lovely to have the president around. It's even better to have a whole group of participating in presentations. Uh, it, it gives the right message to the professionals that we work with. And it gives the right message to 
to a world that is becoming, that is finding it more difficult to collaborate together. So we'll work on that and we'll collaborate on World Mental Health Days and we'll collaborate in our research projects, in our advocacy campaigns. Uh, we, we need each other and we need to, to support uh, the, the uh, societies for that purpose. So thank you very much. I think I'll stop there and I will, uh, you know, we take questions at the end, Helen, aren't we? Uh, yes, I, I think uh, <clears throat> if we have any questions from the audience, we can. Uh, take them, but uh, probably at the end, that's right. And perhaps, shall I then say thank you very much, Nasa, that's been, um, I very much enjoyed your presentation and uh, your reflections on the two societies working much more closely together is a very important one. And uh, I also appreciated your reflections on on gender, that certainly within WPA we have um, worked to, um, to to encourage diversity, to have people from all, from all regions of the world, to have participation equally between uh, genders, 